and welcome back to this tutorial series where we are going over the various options available to 5th edition campaigns within Fantasy Grounds Unity. In this video, we are going to start looking at the remaining options that are located at the bottom of this panel, and we will begin with the Currencies and the Languages buttons. As you know, currencies are one of the ways a player tracks their wealth, be it through the accumulation of coins, gems and jewelry, or through the overall value of their equipment. In 5th edition, by default, there are five standard coins. They are the Platinum, Gold, Electrum, Silver, and Copper pieces. You can see these coins alongside their weights and their values by clicking on the Currencies button down here at the center part of your Options screen to load this panel here. And in this case, the coins are going to be listed by their short names. So PP, GP, EP, SP, and CP represent Platinum pieces, Gold pieces, Electrum pieces, Silver pieces, and Copper pieces. Each coin has a weight of 0.02 pounds, which means that for every 50 coins, a player character is going to gain the equivalent of one pound in carry weight. We also have the value on this particular screen. So if you look here, this copper piece means that it would take about 100 copper pieces to equal one gold piece, or 10 gold pieces to equal one platinum piece. You can add new currencies to the list or remove a given currency in the event that you don't want to support all of the existing coins. For instance, the Electrum piece here is usually not listed in a lot of games, and most DMs see it as like an optional coin type. As such, that DM might decide to remove the Electrum piece from the listing completely. However, even if you were to make a change here, those changes are not reflected on the character's inventory panel because there is no direct code linkage, if you will, between what's listed here in the treasure listing versus what's here in the currency listing. What would it look like going through and adding your own currencies? Well, I'm going to use an example of a game that I once was involved in as a player. This DM had gone through and created their own currency using gem shards, and these shards all had values based on their gold equivalent value. Their values were based on one tenth of the value of the gem, so it would take 10 shards in order to equate the total value of a single gem once it was fully assembled. Although, for a shard, you can't really assemble them that easily. But, they did not introduce any of the gems that was less than one gold pieces in relation to their sharded value. They also changed the default behavior of merchants when dealing with gems, in that they paid the full price for the gem, rather than negotiating a specific amount to pay to a given player. And that's because of the currency changes. And they also used sort of a similar naming convention, in that if they had used Bloodstone, for instance, as one of the shards, then BS was going to be the short name for that particular shard. Amber would be AS, and Diamonds would be DS, for instance. One of the advantages of using gems is that the overall weight of the gem itself, in relation to its value, is far less than the actual coinage values that you have here. So if you were to divide, for example, this Amber by 10, which is the value that this Dungeon Master used, this would equal to 0.001 pounds per shard. And each shard would be valued at about 10 gold pieces. And the reason why the Dungeon Master did this was because they were running their campaign with the Encumbrance Variant Rule, which meant that Encumbrance is very important in relation to the player characters. And carrying around a large amount of coins just simply is no longer as feasible as it was using the default rules or simply ignoring coins as part of the weight completely. Utilizing shards allowed the players to carry around a lot more wealth with them, which meant they were much more vulnerable to things like theft and whatnot, for about a tenth of the weight in relation to the gem. And beyond the merchants paying full price for the gem zones themselves, or even their shards, it wasn't a game-breaking system, because all this particular dungeon master did was take the gemstone itself and divide both the cost and the weight by ten in order to equal a given shard's value. And this created a whole new means of tracking wealth within his games, and it became really interesting over time after having accumulated so much wealth that even the shards were not able to reduce the encumbrance much, so he now had to start looking at a whole banking system, which is something he was trying to avoid in the first place. But how would you represent that within Fantasy Grounds? Because this was a pen and paper based campaign. Well, because we can add new types, we can go through and create three new references here for each of these particular shards. For example, let's start with this bloodstone here. I'm gonna call this BS, because it's gonna be bloodstone. Its weight is going to be 0 0.001. 
and it is going to have a five gold piece value, which is going to place it in between gold pieces and platinum pieces. I'm then going to do the exact same thing for amber. I'm going to call this AS. It will be 0 0.001 again, but this time its value is going to be 10 gold pieces. And then finally, for the diamond, I'm going to call that DS, and this will be slightly different. It's going to be 0 0.004. And this time it's going to be 500 gold pieces. However, when it comes to the character sheets, this treasure section is not going to update to reflect the new currencies that you just added. So even if I were to start adding in these currencies, and let's do the default one. So I'm going to go with platinum pieces, gold, copper pieces, uh, gold pieces, electrum pieces, and then finally silver pieces. I'm pretty certain that covers the default five. Yep, that will cover the default five here. We still have one field here, but we have three additional currencies to add. We need to add in two more currencies. DS, AS, and BS. And as you can see, they sort as soon as you add in the value. And what I mean by that is, as soon as you enter in DS, it's going to sort itself based on this particular value here not on the name. However, if you have two items that are listed as the same amount in gold, they will order themselves alphabetically. So it's a very nice convenient way to keep your treasure listing sorted and crisp and clean. Now once again, this whole thing came about because of a weight limitation when it comes to encumbrance. Now I also currently have this set up to be using the default rule when it comes to encumbrance, but it's still going to showcase the point. I want you to focus on this current value here. And I'm going to add in 100,000 gold pieces. Oops. You can see that it becomes very improbable that a player is going to be able to carry that amount of coinage around. If I convert that into the equivalent value of armor shards or platinum pieces, and we'll start with platinum pieces, that would be about 10,000 coins. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete this, and what we can see is we have added 200 pounds in relation to the default 76 pounds of weight that we had there initially. If I do the same thing in relation to platinum pieces in relation to armor shards, and get rid of that, we can see that we only added about 10 pounds in weight. So you can see how it becomes a little bit more convenient to carry around armor shards than it does for platinum pieces in relation to the exact same value. And then all of that as well is about the equivalent of 200 diamond shards. And if I clear out the armor shards, we can see that we only added a single pound in relation to its weight. And this is why the Dungeon Master created the system that they did. And it's a great way to add in new items that will help your players manage their wealth in game, as long as you're willing to do a little bit of preparation work in advance. The next item we're going to talk about is the languages settings, and this is not one that changes the interface from one language to another from a UI perspective, but more about the languages that your players can use and see within the game. Before we really dig into that, however, I need to remind you of a setting that we covered very early on in relation to the language fonts before we get into the internal settings of Fantasy Grounds Unity's own language configuration. When you load up a campaign, or create a campaign, you have this extension options that pops up over here. Within this selection, you can see that we have the official language fonts as well as an official language fonts FR extension. These are the extensions that introduce the fonts themselves that you actually see within your chat window when somebody's talking in a specific character language. And while you might think that the official language fonts FR Extension here is being introduced by the Source Coast Adventures Guide because FR stands for Forgotten Realms. It's actually not. What it's coming from or where it's coming from is within the 5e add-ons package. So as long as you have the 5th edition rule sets added into your system and downloaded, you will get this particular extension. Now the official language fonts package introduces the, the Celestial, Draconic, Dwarvish, Elvish, Infernal, and Primordial language fonts that you can see within the chat window. The official language fonts FR package also adds an additional font for the common language. And I'll demonstrate what those actually look like once I've loaded up the interface again. Now that I'm back within the main interface, 
you will find the languages listing or panel, if you will, down at the bottom right corner of the options screen here. And this is what you will actually see for a listing. The only difference that you will find between the typical language fonts pack versus the FR language fonts pack is the addition of a font specific to the common language, which you can then select so that when somebody types in common or converses in common, you can see a specific icon font for that language. Now I'm currently showcasing a screenshot that I took earlier in the day when I was trying to prepare for recording this, where I'm showing you all of the languages that are specific to just the normal fonts pack and what they look like on the left side of the screen in the chat window. And this is what all of the language fonts look like when you include the FR package. You can see that the common languages, things like the Infernal, Elven, Draconic, and Celestial, and the other ones, all look the same. The only thing that's really there now is the common font. And that is really the difference between those two packages. Any of these languages that are blank, however, will display nothing in relation to a specific font. But if I go ahead and set, say, one of my languages here, let's go for halfling, and then I just type in the word test, what you will get is that me, the dungeon master in this case, is speaking halfling and I'm typing this out in test. What will happen is, is if there's another character there who understands the halfling language, they will have a translated version of what that language looks like. They will be able to understand what is actually there. Now, give me a moment here. I'm going to go ahead and attach a couple of players to my session here in order to be able to showcase what this is going to look like in relation to a series of communications back and forth. To help demonstrate this, I've loaded two characters, one who has the ability to speak common, elvish, and orcish, and another who has the ability to speak common, gnomish, and halfling. I've also loaded up an orc here so that we can go ahead and use its language font in order to actually communicate between the players. By default, as the dungeon master, whenever you say something in this chat window, it will speak from your point of view, meaning that it will use whatever language you currently have set here. And blank means that it's just going to type in relation to a blank language, meaning English in this particular case. When I click on this chat bubble up top, what you will see is that we will change the speaker in relation to what I'm about to type. And to really role play this out, I want to make sure that when I speak to the players using this particular character, I'm going to do so in Orcish because an Orc is probably going to start with their language and not assume that the other characters don't understand its language. It's just the way that people speak or creatures speak, really. So if I type in the keyword test, what's going to happen is we're going to see this little font here. That's the Orcish font that is being represented by this particular selection. And even though there is no direct Orc language here, it's being displayed in Dwarven. That's the actual font selection that's in use. On the player side of things, what I am able to see here is both the font of the language or the content that was spoken, but at the same time, I see a translation that is here. And that is because this fighter character, who is actually loaded up as a character on this session, is able to understand what that is saying. This particular character does not understand what that is saying, but this character does. If I temporarily release this particular character, and then I go ahead and type in that keyword test again, from the Dungeon Master's point of view, we can see that we no longer understand what was said. And this is a great way to really introduce a role-playing aspect when it comes to speaking different languages between creatures and characters. Because it's going to allow you as the Dungeon Master to play on the limitations of that particular party or a given set of characters within that party because they might not be able to understand the language that they're trying to communicate with in relation to a given creature or NPC. That means that they're going to have to solve the problem of how do they communicate with that particular creature. Well, that could be a spell, that could be some form of written or pictorial language that is common to both of them. They might try to ask questions. Hey, do you speak this language? There's a communication chain that has to come into play now in order to be able to find a way to talk to that particular creature or individual. But if you have five or six party members that are attached and you've only got one character who is able to understand the Orcish language, then the player 
that that particular character is associated with is going to be the only one who's going to be able to understand that language. This is where the character alignment comes into play, because if that particular character is able to understand that language, they may choose not to tip their hand that they understand what that orc is saying. An evil character might strike up a conversation with the orc and mistranslate to the rest of the party in relation to what com- the actual communication is going back and forth. Whereas a good aligned character might legitimately translate everything that the orc has said and then speak back what they themselves have spoken to the orc and translate that as well. The last thing I want to point out in relation to the languages panel is the fact that you can add and remove languages if you so wish. I highly recommend, however, that you don't necessarily remove a language because there's no telling how the extension would handle that. However, adding a new language is just as simple as it was with the currencies. You just simply want to add in a new element and then type in the contents of the title of that language. At that point, you can choose one of the existing fonts in relation to which you would like to use. So let's say Draconic for the language that I just typed in, for example. As soon as that language is added, it will show up in this listing here and allow you to select it in order to be able to type out a message. And based on what you have here for that language selection, you'll get the font that you chose in relation to what you want the font to look like. This is great if you want to create your own race that has its own custom language. You can even go through the process of creating your own font and using an extension to load that font into the application, although I will admit that is well beyond my expertise. In any event, this covers everything that we really need to go over in relation to this languages panel. In summary, I do love the fact that you can go in and add and remove your own currencies as well as your own languages, and it makes it nice and convenient to be able to manipulate that right within Fantasy Grounds itself. So with that, let's move on to the next video.